This lecture is about changing antibiotics. Once an anti antibiotic has been started, the decision on whether to change therapy depends on two factors. The first is the patient's clinical response to your treatment, and the second is the result of cultural sensitivity from microbiological samples that you sent. If your patient is clinically improving on the empiric therapy you've chosen, you need to see if there's any positive microbiology to help you. If you have a bacteria identified and culture and sensitivity is available, then you should look to try and de-escalate your therapy. You should choose a new antibiotic which covers the infection you're treating but has the narrowest possible spectrum of activity. And if possible, that should be an oral drug so that you can make an IV to oral switch. If the patient's getting better, but you've not identified a bacteria, you'll not be able to change the spectrum of activity of your coverage. You may be able to find an oral therapy, which has the same coverage as your empiric IV therapy, and you can make this switch, but the spectrum of activity must remain the same. Life becomes more difficult if the patient's clinically deteriorating or is slow to respond to your empiric therapy. Once again, you need to look to see if there are any positive cultures and you have sensitivity results. Once you've done that, you'll be left with three possible scenarios. If the culture is positive, you might know your bug and be treating it with the wrong drug. You might know your bug and you might be treating with the right drug. Or perhaps all the cultures are negative, and then you'll not know what the bug is, and the, the drug choice will be questionable. Looking at the right blood, wrong drug scenario, this means you know your bug, but you're treating it with the wrong drug, and this is easy. By definition, you'll have an antibiogram such as this. Imagine you're treating an E. coli, and your empiric choice was coamoxiclav, to which the organism is resistant. Not surprisingly, you're patient is, is deteriorating or not improving, and you need to change to the appropriate drug. Here there are four possibilities, and it's important not to just look down the list and pick the one highest on the list that says sensitive. In this case, it's likely that ciprofloxacin would be appropriate as opposed to keftriaxone, gentamicin, or amikacin because ciprofloxacin is available orally. If you've got the right bug and the right drug, that means that the culture and sensitivity results are back and you appear to be treating the right drug, but your patient's not getting better. Here there are five possibilities you need to think about. You may have inadequate source control, and this is probably the commonest. This might mean that there is an occult collection of pus that the antibiotics are not penetrating to, and that's why the patient is improving. And often imaging is important to find that collection. You need to think about the delivery of your antibiotic and whether it's appropriate. If the patient's on oral therapy, maybe they have poor oral absorption and you may have to consider a switch back to intravenous therapy. You may have an inappropriate dose. Remember, some infections require higher doses than others so that you get adequate tissue penetration. For instance, we generally need higher doses when we're treating endocarditis or osteomyelitis. You have to think if there's a comorbid condition. It might be that the, the bacteria you're treating is working well, but actually there's a second condition that's causing the patient to deteriorate. This is common in HIV when we often see more than one infection at the same time. And lastly, you might simply have inappropriate expectations. Some infections take longer to settle than others. For example, ecteric fever or typhoid, the fever usually continues for four or five days and, and you could say something similar about tuberculosis. Things get really difficult when you have an unknown bug and a questionable drug. That is to say, your patient's deteriorating on your empiric therapy and none of your cultures are helpful. Well, first you consider everything on the previous slide because it's possible that you do have the right drug for the right bug. But in addition to that, you need to think about risk factors for other microbes that you may not be covering. Examples of this would be a patient in intensive care unit who could have a pseudomonas infection you're not covering, a patient with diabetes or recent antibiotics who may have a fungal infection such as candida, patients who are immunocompromised or of older age may have listeria, anyone in hospital who's got new diarrhea 
might have Clostridium difficile, and patients with HIV might have infections such as tuberculosis or other opportunistic infections. In summary, the critical factors to determine whether or not you should change antibiotics are the clinical response of the patient and the antibiogram. If the patient's getting better, the spectrum of activity should not be changed if the cultures are negative. If the patient's clinically deteriorating and the antibiotic is correct, the first thing you should consider is source control, as this is the most likely reason. If a patient is deteriorating and the cultures are negative, you should consider risk factors specific bacterial and fungal infections, as you may need to broaden the cover.